A while back, I produced a video about annealing brass using molten salts. And uh, this is the updated version of that. I've learned a few things. So what I'd first like to do is show you what the old setup was like, then um, show you some of the improvements that I've made, and then answer some questions that have been asked about uh, how this works and why it works. To begin with, I tried the Lee lead melter, and that turns out to be a good solution. I tried some uh, inexpensive Chinese versions, and uh, they did not have enough heat to get up to temperature, so I was using this and happy with it. And uh, then, of course, I had this lab stand, and uh, if you can see this, let me move that a little bit. Uh, this barrette clamp to hold my uh, apparatus together. Lead melter fits right here on top of the base. And then <clears throat> I had, well, I still have, a uh, thermocouple and a uh, meter. And then the thermocouple, if I can do that without blocking your view too much, just fit in the barrette holder and went into the pot. And then I could read my temperature here on the meter and manually ride control on the, uh, on the uh, uh, knob here. The, the thermostat here is not a very good one. It's back here in the, in the control unit. and it doesn't, it's not very closely coupled to this. So um, I had to always manually ride that, and, and uh, getting rid of that problem was one of the main reasons for the upgrades. I bought a whole new control setup. <clears throat> uh, part of that is this thermocouple. You don't want the cheap ones that just have the little metal tip exposed. You want one that's clad in stainless steel so it's good for the high temperatures. I uh, paid $5 for this one. And uh, that can just go in there like that. And tie down the clamp. Okay. Here's another one that I got at the same time. And uh, if you're quick, you can get a model number and so forth. Uh, those were so cheap that I bought two of them so that I'd have a spare. I bought this uh, controller uh, and uh, a non-usable uh, thermocouple for a total of $14 delivered. <clears throat> it's pretty simple. You just hit the button briefly. It'll say SU. Use the up and down buttons uh, to set this. And then when you get the temperature you want, uh, you hit the, the set button again just briefly. and. Uh, this is kind of dangerous. I've got 120 volts floating around on my bench. Uh, so this has got to go into a box. Um, now, this is a solid state relay. And it's a 40 amp version. And that came with the controller for the 14 bucks. A lot of people uh, say that you need uh, a heat sink for the solid state relay. Uh, apparently that's not the case. We were only drawing about four amps over here in the uh, melting pot. And uh, this is a 40 amp relay. And for 14 bucks, the controller and the relay, uh, not a bad deal. In case you're interested, here's the model number and the manufacturer on the controller. You should be able to find these on eBay pretty easily. Uh, if I remember right, this one did uh, come in from China, but uh, heck of a good deal and it just works perfectly. One of the ideas somebody put forward was to use this stuff, uh, which is mostly apparently potassium nitrate. And uh, I think it's probably pretty good at removing stumps it's an oxidizer, and so it should break down that uh, 
uh, wood pretty well. But uh, the, sh the uh, short answer is it doesn't work very well. Um, you can see here, this is uh, the uh, cake after it cooled. <clears throat> and you can see this gray material here on top. Uh, the uh, uh, spectrocyte is apparently not pure potassium nitrate. Um, I don't know, you might be able to uh, uh, heat it up and then skim that scum off and have something, but it, it seems like a lot of uh, trouble. Now, sodium nitrate, also known as uh, chile salt pepper, uh, is commonly available in the summertime around here, but uh, not right now. It's winter out. So I'm just sticking with the uh, ones that I bought at the chemical supply store. If you use uh, pure chemicals from the chemical supply store, <clears throat> then when your uh, material sets up, it'll look like this, pure and white. Now, that's a little dirty on the bottom, I guess. But uh, when this is molten, it is as clear as water. So that's what you should be expecting. Some people have asked, can we use pure potassium nitrate? It melts in the right range and so forth. And the answer is, yes, you can. But there, it has a little side effect that you won't like. And the side effect <clears throat> is that when it uh, solidifies, it expands. So it's going to be very firmly wedged in the bottom of your melting pot. And uh, if you use the recommended mixture, uh, that uh, isn't a problem. Now, <clears throat> uh, some of you saw this earlier on. This is my bottle that I mixed up my supplies in, and this was a mistake. Um, you shouldn't mix those up in advance. You should mix what you need. Uh, because if you don't, what happens is that the uh, granules separate in the jar and your mix won't remain the same. So it uh, turns out that you need about 90 grams of mixture to get the right depth in a uh, pot the size of this uh, Lee pot here. Okay, So it's going to be um, 34, 36 grams of potassium nitrate and about um, 54 grams of uh, sodium nitrate. And I would mix those, uh, excuse me, I would not mix those. I would measure each, put them in the cup, and stir them up a little bit. All right, let's see if I can hit 36 grams here. Just a little more. Woo! Doesn't have to be perfectly precise. That's good, right there. All right. So let's put that into the melting pot and measure out our sodium nitrate. And that'll be 54 grams. <clears throat> There we go. Okay, put that in. And just for good measure, stir it all up. Okay, now we have power applied. That'll come up to 438 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. This is about 820 degrees F, um, which is a good place to operate. And uh, this will melt down and it will be clear as water. And uh, then we'll anneal some brass. Okay, that's probably close enough to start annealing. You just put that in one, two, three, it's annealed. 
Um, some people have uh, wondered if indeed this does anneal the brass. One, two, three. And uh, the answer is yes, it does. I uh, sectioned a uh, uh, rifle cartridge case, uh, cut it into two halves, and uh, took two pairs of pliers and uh, cranked back and forth, bending it until it's cracked. And it doesn't take very many uh, flexes before brass uh, cracks. The, uh, I took its uh, twin brother, and um, after every six or so, six or seven uh, cranks, I uh, annealed it. And uh, I never could get it to fail, so it was clearly annealed. Um, if you're quick, you may notice that uh, these cases have been uh, deprimed. And the reason for that is if you don't, you'll get, uh, you'll get uh, uh, salts trapped in the brass, and that's not good. Uh, what you want to do after you've done this, um, uh, done all your brass, uh, you want to uh, rinse it in hot soapy water and then rinse it a couple of times in plain water to make sure that you've gotten all the salts out. And if you do that, you will have perfectly annealed brass uh, that you can shoot for a long, long time.